Hey, this is Robert at Guzzi Fabrication. Hit that like and subscribe notification bell. Hey, we are on the 63 Impala. And <laughs> if you've been following this build, well, we've run into quite a few uh, new part issues. So today I'm going to be showing you one way of making a perfect gap. Oh, hey, that's the end. That's already done. Let me show you what we're working with. Okay, I've got the fender on and it is tightened up. I've got the lower body line and the midline lined up. This is the top. Yeah, it's not so pretty. You can see the shot of the midline and the bottom line. Body line. And the gap looks really wide, but that's just the video. It's right where we want it. What we need to address is this top edge. Yeah, that looks pretty ugly. Okay, so first trick we're going to try. That little divot there, that is a resistance weld. And there is a bracket directly underneath the fender top that attaches the uh, fender to the body. So what we're going to do is drill that out and see if we can tap that down a little bit because it's way too high. And that was a little homemade tool that I made that I used to tap that down. And you can see we've got it down considerably. Yeah, we've got a couple of different issues. The fender was higher than the door and that gap is wider. It wise out. Okay, you can see how far down that it's come. So now that we have it where we want it, we're going to go ahead and get that welded back into place. Here's a shot of what we've done or have completed. How about that? Yeah, that's a bit, that's an ugly gap. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to use a welding rod and we're going to add to the door. Now I could add to the door or the fender. I'm choosing the door because that is easily reversible. Say this door gets put on another car at some time in its life. Here's a restoration tip. You saw me just sand that stuff down to prep that area. Well, instead of blowing it, just wipe it off with your hand. Less particulates in the air, less you're breathing. Not a life and death situation uh, once or twice, but if you're doing this for 20 or 30 years, uh, yeah, pays to be smart. Okay, back to what we're doing. We are cutting that rod down to length. Back to what I was saying. The repair is going to be completely reversible. It can be removed pretty easily. Now, if I add it, and that's adding onto the door. Now, if I add it onto the fender, well, that would be a little bit tougher to reverse. And here I am shaping it. And this will be a little bit uh, more straightforward and easier to do, more uh, user friendly. If you're trying this for the first time. A lot easier to add to the uh, door than to the fender. Okay, now that we've got it roughed in the shape. Yeah, it keeps rolling on me. Okay, I'm going to shave that part down just a little bit. And that's our cut mark. Okay, now we've got a cut to length. And we are shaving that thing down a little bit. And here's what we have. Final fit up. And 
and we are going to use a MIG welder. I get a lot of comments sometimes, uh, why don't you use a TIG welder? Well, you know, if you want to use a TIG, that's fine. We, we can TIG it if we want, but this is uh, what most people have. And since this is a kind of a do-it-yourself type channel, uh, most people have a MIG welder more readily available than a TIG. So we're going to use a MIG. See if we can uh, help somebody out with this. And we're building that little edge, that little ramping it in there. We don't want a hard break because we don't really want to use body filler here. We want this to be a metal finish. Okay, there's that. Now, one very important thing is you want to make sure that it is lined up. Um, you don't want it really high or low. And now I've got a little brass rod that I'm using as a backer. That way the weld penetrates through and I get a really nice weld. Not a lot of voids, anything like that. And being level is really critical because if it's too high or too low, well, now you got to grind too much off. Or if it's too low, now you have to add filler. Yeah, that's not what we're doing here. Usually, if you take your time, be patient, follow all the steps, you don't have to end up with a bunch of filler. Filler's really, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of body filler, but it's so easily avoid, avoided by just doing it correctly and a little forethought and you notice I'm welding the back side also and what you're not seeing in the video is I'm kind of pausing in between not wanting to let it get too hot I don't there's not going to really be a problem with warping anything here because it's a curved and it's right on an edge but it's just best practice not to uh, get in the habit of welding too quickly. And you can see our heat signature there. Yeah, whenever you start seeing that build up and running out, yeah, time to slow down. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, we're going to clean it up real quick with the uh, wire wheel. Check our work. And we'll start uh, with the flap wheel. And we're working on that leading edge. Now, we don't want to angle that flap wheel and get into the dig a gouge and thin out the metal in the door. We want to get on that edge, knock it down real quick and shape and contour it and we are just going to finish it off with a Rolox disc the shaping part and it has that little body line there so we want to be conscious of that too And the trick is to get enough material on there so that you can shape and contour. Okay, now I've switched to a different style of flap wheel. This is a round flap wheel instead of the disc. And as we're just getting progressively finer and finer. And this is a uh, 36 grit on an eight inch orbital. This is really blending everything in now. Really, really happy with this. And I encourage everyone, this is something that everyone can do. wiping that off instead of blowing it again 
restoration tip, general tip, life tip. You can see the contours really coming along. Now we're just hitting it with that 36 grit. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay. So the way we're going to finish the gap is instead of just guessing and start grinding, it's just as easy to uh, lay out a little bit of tape, get the gap that's desired dress the metal down to that tape and everything should go our way we're going to start with this Rolox and that's just a 3M brand of uh, sanding disc this happens to be 24 grit, I believe, on here. And here's the part where you want to be really careful. You don't want to go too, too much and have to go back into it and welding. Now we're just going to finish off. I can get more maneuverability and a straighter dress on that using that tool instead of the uh, Rolox. And we are going to finish it off. We're finishing it off with a file because yeah, I don't want to go too much and then have to go back and weld more back onto it. Get enough the first time, weld, and then shape it down and, and uh, without having to go back and re-weld. And we don't want to forget the underside. I'm going to go ahead and address that. Now this car will have to be blown back apart. The doors are coming off anyway. And we're going to double check and make sure everything is uh, dressed down and finished out while it's off. It will be coming back apart for uh, bodywork and paint after blocking. And that's what we have. I can live with that. Yeah, it's like every gap on this vehicle. <laughs> We have to address like this. Yeah, we're, we're not catching any brakes at all on this car. But hey, we're getting through it. Hey, and there's going to be a little bonus here. So, now I did forget uh, the flap wheel. So, what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the materials. And then we'll lay out some of the pricing. That's a 3M disc, and those are getting hard to find. Um, there's a flap wheel. Now, I left out the flap disc. That's not, I'm not even pricing that. That's a little 3-inch uh, 80 grit on that little one. And that's an, the uh, 24-36 8-inch. And you saw me use that little tool. wire wheel a little Rolox disc now that is 24 the 8 inch is 36 roll of tape 
And we're not even, and this is PPE too, you got to include that plus the welding supplies. Now, I, I know somebody's out there saying, well, you're not using all of this. You're going to use some of it on another build, well, or on another part. Well, yeah, but I still had to pay for this up front. And usually you have to buy by the box. So it's not just individual. supplies and material and so we'll uh, add all of that up and it's like I said you can add like 15 more bucks for the other flap disc that I left out 10 to 15 yeah maybe these prices are uh, on or lesser that's about what I pay so up front my cost on materials is $144 what you see on the table Hey, and as always, thank you for watching.